Hello everyone, uh, it's great to be here uh, at NAB. I think it's my first time I've been back at NAB, most of you, probably the last five years. Uh, so it's good to see everyone here in person. Um, as was said, my name is uh, Angus Neal. I'm founder and chief creative of a company called Craymaker. Uh, we are a 100% cloud-based studio. Um, but before I get into that, let me just actually run you through what we're actually going to be talking about. So a little bit about my background, who I am. Um, so, you know, I've, been, I've, I've had quite a long career. I've been involved in advertising for nearly ooh, 30 years, I'd say. Uh, I've gone from everything from being a graphic designer to a 3D animator to a compositor to a director. So quite a well-versed background, well-versed well history in terms of what I do. Um, got multiple of awards. No one likes to blow their own trumpet, but I'm fortunate enough to have won quite a few awards throughout my career. Uh, and my brain is really split left and right. So I'm technical as well as creative, really enjoy kind of innovating. So when the cloud started to come of age, and it was a really interesting place to start innovating in. I was really excited about that. Um, I'm a member of the IAA, um, International Advertising Association. Uh, and a couple of standout projects that I've been involved in over the years is uh, I was instrumental in helping digital animals be used and created for films. And this huge transition has happened. There was a piece that, we, that I was involved in a few years ago that basically won the Cannes Gold Lion and basically got the whole world realizing that they didn't need to use live animals anymore. They can actually create animals totally in CGI and, and effects. Um, another one of my innovations I've been in, proud of actually being involved in is something called the Blackbird, which is a vehicle that can actually change shape. It can imitate other vehicles and then it gets cloaked in CGI. And it's like a, it's like a virtual production rig for basically imitating any vehicle that's out there. Um, and I'm based in New York City. So what I'm going to be talking about today um, is who we are, what do we do, the tools that we actually use. Um, I'm going to showcase some really cool projects that we've been involved in. We're quite diverse. We don't try and focus in one in one lane. Uh, people kind of ask me, "What? Well, what is your studio? What do you actually do?" And my, you know, my my biggest response is that we innovate in content creation. So we actually make content utilizing the latest technologies out there in order to be able to tell stories for brands, advertising, etc. Um, so today I'm going to be showing you a short film trailer of a film called Blue. We've been working on this for a while. Um, and then moving on to something that's quite diverse is actually a virtual reality game that we made. Obviously, you can't experience VR here, um, but we're just going to show you some screen captures from that, but get a good idea in terms of the quality we've been able to achieve. Uh, and then also just some good old fashioned linear visual effects, the stuff that, you know, we've been doing for years, everyone's seen it before, but this is quite funny because it's actually set at the um, MG at, at the Bellagio and features these huge fountains turning into ice giants. So kind of, kind of a cool spot to be showing at NAB. Um, and most importantly for me is Praymaker is hiring across all departments. So if, if anyone's looking for kind of uh, fantastic, <laughs> hit me up later on. Uh, we're, we're hiring across design, animation, 2D, 3D, engineering, oh, DevOps, the whole lot. So we're, we're, we're growing. Okay, so uh, who are we? Founded in 2020, um, two weeks before the pandemic hit. So uh, that was a very interesting uh, experience. Luckily for us is we had actually made the foresight to actually build the company in AWS. And that really set us off. Uh, you know, on, the, on, on, on a good footing. We were able to literally go home from our, our 10,000 square foot studio that we had just signed the lease for in Manhattan and actually work from home. So it was very fortunate. I'd probably say, had we not actually built ourselves in the cloud, we probably wouldn't be around today, given the fact that we actually started right at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, so we create original content for current and next generation platforms. I'm very interested in what's coming around the corner, always interested, very curious in terms of where technology is taking us and what possibilities there are in terms of actually telling stories. Um, areas that we cover, it's quite a wide gamut, design, animation, color vision effects, virtual reality, augmented reality, experiential. Um, we've got one studio currently uh, in New York City, the small plant, uh, and, but we have a global team of people. Now, the beautiful thing about the cloud is it's allowed us to tap into talent that is not just in New York City, 
and not just in New York State or in the USA, but we're literally tapping into talent that is global. And this was uh, an extraordinary revelation when we started, is we didn't realize that this would actually be the case, that we would be able to do this. Um, and over the course of the last two years, the, the talent that we've been able to find and the talent that we've been able to find us has really been remarkable. And I think that the cloud for companies that do what we do um, is a natural choice in terms of moving forward and, and place to build because it just, it, it's, it, it just, it's, we're all about talents. We're all about the best people using the best technology. Best technology is in AWS and the best talent is global. So it's that you just find, find the talent where they are. So some of our tools, um, you know, I didn't want to list everything, but like it's, I just want to show you how diverse we are. You've got a really, really wide, wide tool set. As I said, this is, you know, looking across everything from visual effects to augmented reality to virtual reality. We, we use um, a Weka uh, file system. It is by far the best file system out there. Um, it is faster than anything I've ever seen, even in bare metal. And it really has enabled us to scale up and scale down dramatically. So thank you to the, the friends at Weka that have really helped us along this journey. Um, and Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine is something that I've been passionate about for many years uh, and have been really trying to push forward what's possible with Un Unreal Engine. And it's obviously everyone knows that Fortnite, you know, it's getting a lot of traction right now. And we utilize it a lot for making content. Uh, it's a phenomenal tool. Um, it's only going to get better. And I believe that's also where the future is in terms of creating content. Um, so these are some recent projects uh, that I was talking about, the Animated Film Blue, the Virtual Reality Maze, and the BitMGM Giants. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna play you uh, each piece, and then I can talk about it um, after I've played it. trailer for a film that we're working on to be released later this year. Uh, what's remarkable about, about this film is that every single frame of it was actually rendered in the Unreal game engine. Um, it hasn't gone through any form of color correction. It hasn't gone through any form of finishing. It's literally straight out of the Unreal game engine, straight onto the screen. Well, obviously go through the editorial process to put the shots together. But it's remarkable the type of quality that you can get on a, out of the Unreal game engine now. Again, oh, it's for four point. I think, I think that was the five. Five wasn't ready yet, but it's like this type of quality. Two years ago, uh, one year ago, would not have been possible. You'd have to have rendered this all in CPUs or GPUs. Here we have one gaming computer or one NVIDIA Tesla, <laughs> probably slightly more powerful than a gaming computer, but one graphics card rendering this entire film, which I think is just a monumental sea change for what's actually gonna happen in the world of animation, visual effects, and design. Um, our objective was really to, to create a, a film that really demonstrated what was pow powerful and what was possible in Unreal Game Engine. I think a lot of people you know, didn't think that the quality levels could, could reach that of, an, of, a, of a big budget animated feature, but I think that when the film comes out later on this year, I think people will be able to see just the quality that we've been able to achieve. We're super, super, super proud of it. Um, next piece mm -hmm. I want to speak about is the um, VR liquidity maze. So there's a company called State Street. Uh, it's a financial services company. Um, and they did, they did a phenomenal campaign a few years ago, the Fearless Girl. I don't know if anyone remembers that. There's a little bronze statue of a girl standing in front of a a bull in, in, in New York City. It's one of the most iconic bits of advertising, just installation advertising. That, that made them stand out in the world of advertising. So we were approached by a McCann, 
as an advertising agency and uh, wanted us to to build an immersive experience for them. And we were cre able to create a 120 frame per second virtual reality experience, a game essentially. Uh, we built it from beginning to end, uh, did all the bug fixing, all the testing, the whole lot, uh, and released it. So the majority of this was actually built in AWS. Um, but then the last little section, we actually had to have physical hardware on the ground because of the latency of VR. Our next step is actually trying to figure out how to actually use local zones in order to be able to drive VR rigs directly. But let me just show you, this is a screen grab. Um, so this is from the, the, the liquidity maze, let's call it. Uh, State Street is all about liquidity. Um, for those in finance might kind of understand what it means, but basically they wanted this liquidity theme to run throughout to actually just demonstrate uh, what, what they could do. So here's some, here's some graphics. We had about, I'd say, two months to pull off this project from brief until the actual physical installation. So this is a montage. This is not uh, the full walkthrough. The full walkthrough of the game, depending on how good you are, can take anywhere between three minutes to 20 minutes. Uh, and it was, it was there, there was a leaderboard, so it was a, there was a competitive ele element to it. And we had to get the leaderboard right, because for every person that got into the top 10, a certain amount of funds were actually going to be donated. So there was, there was no room for error here. We had to make sure that it was all working. But again, all rendered in, in Unreal, all rendered uh, in real time. And as I said earlier, all rendered at 120 frames per second stereoscopic. So that is an enormous frame rate uh, to render. I think the quality just speaks for itself, really. So talking about the liquidity maze again, um, projects like this, we actually made for a specific hardware platform. So this was actually made for the, for the, uh, the, the Valve Index. Um, we, look, we wanted to find something that really was just the pinnacle of VR that, that wasn't constrained by GPU. Um, and we, we, we considered um, the Quest, but the, G, the GPU quality was just not there. So we actually kind of specifically made this for, for the, for the um, Valve Index. Uh, there's, a, there's an interactive element. Uh, people can actually kind of touch this orb that's your, your, um, your wayfinder, your helper through the liquidity maze, as it were. And it, it got great, uh, great feedback from the people on the, on the show floor. So the last piece I want to show you uh, is this is for Bet MGM, Ice Giants. It's quite funny driving up and down the strip in the evening. I see all these Bet MGM commercials, and, and these the, we've actually been doing all these Bet MGM commercials for the last two years. And it's quite funny when you slave over something for hours and hours and hours, and then you forget about it, and then you see it again. It's quite it's like a reminder. But anyway, so whenever you see a Jamie Foxx or a then lots of fire and explosions and Ice Giants, that's us. That's that's our magic that we're weaving. Um, so this is a, the, the, this is the uh, spot called Ice Giants. The customer's ob objective is to freeze the Bellagio fountains, <clears throat> then turn the fountains into 300 foot ice giants, and then blow everything up. So it was actually quite a, quite a fun brief. We got to uh, go into the underbelly of the Bellagio and really got to see the inner workings and how it worked. It was a really fun project because we actually got to program the fountains and actually got to kind of capture what we needed. So we got quite deep in, in that process. It's one of the things I love to do as well is get involved heavily on the shoots, heavily involved in the production and the process and just make sure that you're not just relying on visual effects on the back end, CGI on the back end, but you're really trying to capture as much in camera as possible. So it just gets you off on the right foot. So here is a bit MGM ice giants. Oh, and this guy talking, anyone who's Canadian or anyone who likes ice hockey is, uh, is Wayne Gretzky, the great Wayne Gretzky. With every tap, a new legend is born. A chance to grab destiny. Defy the odds. And strike. Because every bet with bet MGM has a potential for greatness. So, project that. So for a company that was only a year old at the time to be able to pull off something like this is kind of unheard of. Um, you know, this we used up to about 800 render nodes at one stage. Uh, and the, 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 
the barrier to entry uh, would have been astronomical previously. And this just allowed us to actually embrace a project of this scale. Um, it was highly complex, lots of transparencies, lots of ice. Anyone that does CGI and visual effects and knows that transparency is ice, liquid, all that is incredibly difficult. Um, so that's kind of a touch of what we've been doing up until now in our, in our two year uh, existence. Uh, I've raced through this. I've, um, and what are we gonna be inv investing in? Where are we going next? So as I said, real time and game engines, you know, this is a huge focus of ours. Uh, this is probably the most exciting area for, for, for content creation, uh, especially in, in CGI. Um, augmented reality, it's still bubbling away. You know, everyone's waiting for kind of what, what Apple's working on. You know, we really want to see what's coming out there. Um, the metaverse, I'm sure, is for everyone has just suddenly exploded. Uh, that, that the, the language, the metaverse, has, has gone from events like these down to the, the kind of everyday person in the streets, which is quite extraordinary. We're getting hit up by clients on a daily basis, asking us about uh, how do we get into the metaverse? How do we kind of participate in the metaverse? And there's just a huge learning curve that people have to go through. Uh, and I think everyone's going through um, right now. Uh, virtual production. Virtual production is obviously being used with great success on big budget animated uh, shows and, and live action shows like The Mandalorian and some like the, the Batman as well, uh, the latest Batman, a lot of that was shot in virtual production. But one area that it actually hasn't really been able to break into successfully is, is commercial production, um, commercial advertising, and, and that is traditionally very time challenged. Clients can't make up their mind and they like to defer everything until after until later. So it's just not well suited to, to advertising. But that being said, we're, we're really excited about it and really pushing it forward. Um, obviously, machine learning to try and help us kind of improve what we do, especially animation style transfer. This is something that we're working on pretty heavily. Uh, we believe that animation style transfer can really help uh, the quality of animation and just the nuance in animation, um, especially kind of with trying to add in subtle organic expressions into characters and that that doesn't have to be done by hand. So we're spending a lot of time doing that. Um, and that's, that's Playmaker, that's what we've been doing. I'd just like to thank you.